Okay, good afternoon. I think it's the first, what should I say? It's good afternoon, yes. So, we are, yes. It's the design and the developer, Marco. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so I am the designer and uh, my name is Chiara Liotta. I am the founder of the year over there in SVG and uh, I'm founder and creative director of my small company called Until Sunday. And you probably, if you go, if you follow me somewhere in some social, you can see also my cat, which is always with me, but not today. And with Marco. Yes, my name is Marco Dings. I'm co-founder of Peria Group, where I have a company together with Uli Chisley. I would, uh, I like to think of myself as a technology enthusiast, but I'm a little perfectionistic, uh, strong-headed, and I love a good life. I think mm -hmm. good things in life. Ask about it, the picture and control it, and control it. Okay, so um, this website, it's a real website. Uh, we will give you probably the link if Marco will allow me to do that. Yes, and it's a working one because we want to show you really in real life how you can implement SVG in your website. And um, this presentation starts with a, start with a kind of conversation we had with Marco. Uh, we, were work we are working on a, on a project and I've designed a few icons and different logos and stuff for this website and they are mostly all in SVG, they are all vectors and I asked him if we could implement them in SV as a SVG because I really was interested to explore the SVG on web which are quite rare and lately in my working with developers they always prefer PNG and JPEGs which are not really great, they don't, they don't really render well in retina display, so we have to work around, even if they are fully compatible, but they have a really big problem in terms of response, or, uh, to be responsive. Um, they are not, first of all, they are not um, crystal clear like a SVG can be. You can display SVG in, in any size you want, it's a vector file. <coughs> SVG are actually based in a, in a text file, XML, which some developers are quite scared about. Um, you can scale them as much as you want, and they are always perfect, pixel perfect, as I want them. And uh, you can color and color with the CSS. You can control them completely with the CSS and create animation, which is just amazing. And so when we start w working on this project, we say, that uh, it was worth to, to talk about that at the Jane Beyond because it's something that we want really to encourage people to go on with this technology. Although it's not fully compatible with old browsers, but the old and new browser are really uh, working well with it. And you can see that, I mean, this is Chrome and Marco has tested in many other new browsers and it's working pretty fine. So, more than fine. <laughs> so. With R, for example, on the left hand side, the same. This one will, but that's not the fact. It's the same heart, it's an inch, and it's still on the same side. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, on this, to get this kind of um, uh, elements work perfectly, and he can work, the developer can work with that, it's really important the designer knows how to prepare those files. Um, so I use different kind of, pro well, I use Illustrator mostly. I start to use also Sketch because uh, Babs was pressing me and to know about that, to, to get know with that. So yes, uh, <laughs> and also Inkspa um, uh, Inkspace, which is, uh, which is another free program. There are different kind of program you actually can use to editing SVG. I use Illustrator still. Um, 
and I'm going to show you how you should create a real SVG that's going to work in on the web. Because it's not just the sport in them, like SVG save as a sport, uh, sorry, save a file save as a sporty, but it's a little bit more complex uh, work behind it if we want to achieve the kind of result. So I'm going to show it because there is no other way and the computer is here. Are you going to see the screen? And uh, I don't mind if, um, um, let me check here, um, illustrator. So, so um, this is the top part of our website. And those are the layers. What I have done here is to create one group. At the moment, uh, what, um, what the code does is to read the SVG uh, the ID and uh, those layers as ID and classes. So it's really extremely important how you name them. If you, if you make it wrong, Marco or any kind of developer will come to you and ask to change for that because he won't find those names in the file or maybe he won't be able to, he has to, um, Illustrator produce really strange name if you name them in a particular way. So. I'm going to show you mo right now what is going to happen and how I prepare those files. They are f one over the other one, all inside one group. And so this is uh, Marco, and this is me. And all those groups contain all the elements. And if you can see them, they are all named one by one. So that uh, inside the code, the SVG code, he can find them and modify color, style, whatever he wants. So he can make the animation that we saw before, um, like uh, remove the glasses from us because he can find that uh, element called gra glasses. So um, it's really important also how you sport them. Gonna give you some tips about that if you work with Illustrator, which is quite common for us designers. So you expect to find it under save for web, but it's not. It's uh, under save for with name. And uh, we are going here. And uh, the most important thing is to create a file that is uh, small enough, because what is great about SVG, you can produce really small file size um, if you correctly set these uh, parameters. So um, we want to have SVG 1.1. You must know that SVG is an old technology, and uh, it started to be around in 1999, but just right now it's becoming quite known in the web because of the responsiveness they have. And um, there was uh, before also this SVG Tiny, which was used if you were going to create something for uh, um, mobile. Um, but SVG 1.1 1, 1 is the one appro approved by the W3C, so from the consortium. So the type, of course, SVG. I choose not to use subsystem, any kind of font. I don't have any font inside my SVG, so I decide not to uh, upload them. If you have font in your SVG, you can decide to have include all your grief. I'm sorry it's Italian, but I hope you can follow me uh, with that. Um, usually fonts inside SVG increase the, the size of the file. So it's always good if you can just have illustration. You can transform them in puff if we want, but even that, it's, uh, it just increases the size. If you have a puff, um, yes, you don't really need to have, uh, uh, you don't need really need to introduce any kind of glyphs inside the file because it's a puff, so it will really like a vector object. Um, I choose here link for uh, the image. W in those files, we don't have any image, they are all vectors. So I just you do choose link, but uh, um, link uh, means that you have an external link outside your, uh, in your SVG file. So when you import, you export them, you give it to the developer, it's always good you remember to bring the link file, the image with you. It's the same, you know, you, you, when you have your folder with images, you have absolute, um, absolute uh, address, so you just have to give all the folder to the developer in order not to, to lose pieces of your um, illustration. Um, for properties, you see properties. Um, I choose um, elements, uh, style elements. 
so that he can style it, so that the developer can style it easily, and decimals. This is really important. <coughs> Illustrator, by default, produces a lot of small vector coordinates. Um, but I've noticed that if I increase, if I uh, increase the coordinates, and I try to have a preview here, so this is uh, with 20 coordinates. This is my image with 20 coordinates. But uh, if I go with one, uh, 20 is what, seven, okay, but again, the image is still the same, it's still sharp. The coordinates are those small uh, little points inside the vector, you know, when you want to move them, so that, that these are. The more you have, the more heavy becomes the file. So it's always good you set the decimal quite low. If you see your lowest quality, just raise them up. But in this case, I just have one decimal because they are quite clean as uh, vectors. And... Um, Oops, yeah, I have it. <laughs> it's my bag. <laughs> it's okay. Um, um, so there are a few more other options you can have here. We are not going to explore them because we don't need them. But for example, uh, you don't need to unselect those because uh, if you have just the pure, inf uh, pure um, information, you really don't need to have to go so <coughs> in, um, in you don't need to have any plugin to visualize SVGs. You don't need to include any extra data inside that because the SVG contain already them. But only if you have a text, so text does not transform in path, you need to select those, the T-span and the T-text path. This will just remove the, the T-span from the text. And Marco, I think, you, we showed them how you can actually create kerning and tracking. You know kerning and tracking, what are they? This typography? It's the space between letter and words, okay? You can do that by using SVG, I mean, by code. So he, can, he will manipulate everything. The developer can, will be able to manipulate everything. So the code that we will have is something that looks like this. And Marco is going to actually clean it a little bit up because Illustrator create a little bit of quirks. And um, so I'm going to export it as it is now. So we, what we saw bef until now is we have to name the files, and we have to name, sorry, the layers in a proper way so that we have a single name for each layer. The other thing, it's really important we export SVG that produce a really small file size. And uh, if finally one we once we have done that, we can actually give it to the developer. And um, as I said before, there are some things the Illustrator does in terms of, uh, um, okay, hope I can go back here. Um, there is some things the Illustrator does in terms of uh, code. Um, let me go here. So um, this is a code example, and I hope I'm going to make it. I'm going to say it so that it makes sense what I... So Illustrator creates some strange thing. First of all, if we don't name, uh, if, um, if we don't name correct, we, it's really important that between design and developer there is a kind of name convention agreement. So for example, between Marco, at the beginning we didn't have it, and I named my name is name the layers of the Illustrator file and then uh, of the SVG with uppercase. So Marco writing them, he gave it uh, the assumption that I wrote them all lowercase, so I couldn't find the Chiara with the uppercase, which is uh, really important. I mean, uh, it's really important we have a name convention. So we agree, both of us, that we're going to use everything lowercase. The other important thing is that uh, whatever you have similar name, Illustrator by default adds some strange uh, numbering in order to identify the different elements. And the other um, important, um, and, and the other thing that the Illustrator does is that um, create a kind of, uh, uh, it finds, if it finds uh, strange characters, it replaces with strange letters, like the X5F that you see here. Um, and other, another really important thing is that 
illustrator doesn't know that I'm going to use those files along with other SVG in the same HTML. So what it does is that it creates tiling all with the numbering them by, I don't know, from one to nine and so on with this kind of .st4. That means if I make a new SVG that's called, um, I don't know, uh, icons, the SVG of the icons that we saw before in, my, in the website, um, um, it will create like, um, um, it will, it will, they will overlap because they have the same name of styling. So what we need really to be careful how, I mean, Marco has worked on the code in order that those SVG, although they are on the same HTML, are not going to overlap in styling. So they, we will define them by style, but we will say that that kind of group is going to work like that, and this group is going to work like this. So they're going to use different colors, um, but not overlapping each other. And uh, yes, also URL names. Uh, they produce also unique U U uh, URL, URL name for all the files. So again, if I export uh, to SVG from Illustrator, it will give the same URL, and that's not possible. So. So it's really important, and that's why we, we always say that, and I always say that in the, my previous presentation last year and doing beyond about talking about f mm, the open communication between designer and developer, that we base uh, um, our work in, in this kind of uh, open communication. I mean, that we work uh, with developer in uh, side by side, because in this case, SVG really requires not something that you like the image, you just export it. It requires just a little bit more of thinking from both sides. So now Marco is going to show you what he has done with my illustrations, which is uh, quite amazing. I was really, it blew my mind, so I... So if I can get the microphone. Yes. So you can, you can manage the yeah, yeah. Yeah. see that I get into the picture. Uh, Chiara was showing the, well, we, instead of doing a slideshow, we, we made like more of a documentation uh, site, uh, all of which will be uh, available afterwards after it has been spell checked, which we didn't get around to yet, so <laughs> please bear with us. Uh, so this will be the part that Kiara was talking about. And then uh, the last part will be like the naming conventions that uh, we talked about. But yeah, it's all about how to get your scalable uh, your graphics into your website. So, how could we use them? Well, there's like four ways to use them. The first one would be to embed them. Uh, so you saw Kiara's piece of code. It starts with SVG and it's just XML. You could just paste that into your piece of code. You could use it as a font. There's some tools to co convert them. Um, you could uh, inject them and use them just plainly as an image. So let's first start with that. If you load them as an image, well, you just basically do it like that. So image class, source, and where you would normally put something like PNG, you would put your SVG. And it works. You see three of the examples there. Uh, you will see that to the right hand side where the animation is performed inside uh, the SVG file. Uh, that still works also as an image. The middle one, well, maybe a bit hard to see, but the CSS uh, animation doesn't work uh, because there's it's an image and you can't look into the image uh, as such. Um, so, the usual image styling applies, uh, animation works fine, CSS3 animation fails. <coughs> As an image, you can also load them in the background. Now, I don't think that the, uh, the actual the blue square in the middle, what you see, that's the foreground image, but it's used as a background image to provide a very fine grid of uh, yeah, tiles uh, to produce that background. 
and you will actually uh, see that further on where it's uh, how it well the code example here is how it's uh, implemented so this piece of code just produces that rectangle really tiny and it will scale perfectly on uh, just about any background when we embed as I said you will see uh, let me explain so you've got your HTML class and then in that you put your whole blurb of SVG that has the example that you can style it so put some CSS in here and then instead of the slightly darker blue you will see that the inner now has a lightish blue uh, so all colors visibility parts can be manipulated in that but it has a disadvantage because it means that wherever you want to use this square of any or any graphics you would end up copying your code which is not really a good practice another way of doing it would be to uh, use some external tools that allow you to uh, upload your vector graphics and get them returned to you as a font now we all know how to use a font uh, and you can just address your individual images as font uh, but you don't have internal styling there's two big ones out there that allow it one's icomoon uh, and the newest one is use iconic uh, which has uh, some additional stuff it's quite new it was a kickstarter project uh, and it has lots of features in it and drawback on that is that if you want to have the full package that's paid so again well it's a lot of information on page don't try to read it all uh, just read it as your uh, at your leisure as a reference later and then we come at <coughs> javascript support <coughs> We can also load SVGs using some kind of JavaScript support libraries. And that's where the fun starts, at least for me. Um, from top to down, uh, there are two known ones. That's Snap, which is a very contemporary uh, library to allow um, manipulation, animation, all kinds of neat stuff uh, to do with uh, SVG. Drawback, uh, it only works on contemporary browsers so the ie 6 7 stuff doesn't work same author started with Raphael famous 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 painter um, same thing but that has backward compatibility stuff built in so whatever you want you can choose either one of them drawback snap uses native SVG if you want to use Raphael you'll have some conversion tool first to kind of converted to some uh, JavaScript intermediary. Then another option would be to use uh, SVG Web. Uh, that converts your SVGs uh, into Flash, uh, which in my opinion kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but for the sake of completeness, uh, completeness I named it. And the last one we will extend upon is SVG Injector. SVG Injector is part of the Icomoon uh, project and it's provided as open source so anybody can use at least that library. <coughs> and that part I dubbed Injection. Injecting into the DOM. It's kind of new it's fairly small. Uh, we'll get some performance pictures later on. It provides fallback for images, so even if the browser doesn't support it, you could serve an image. Uh, so, well, does it work in IE 6 or 7? Yes, it works, but doesn't have the uh, advantages you would want. The syntax is similar to the loading of the image, but you will see one class that's called Inject Me. I call it inject me because that's a, s that's a default setting, uh, but 
you could use any word and in the configuration say, okay, I want all these images that are tagged with that class or ID or whatever CSS selector you name to be injected, injected into the DOM. And SVG as such is an encapsulated something. Uh, that means that it stands on itself. You cannot look into it. That's the reason why you can't style it uh, or the internals, can st you can't style, style the internals if you use it as an image. That's also the reason why tools like Illustrator don't mind with the quirks because they don't see the use case, which we are going to do by this tool, by breaking it open, referencing the file, and then exporting everything that's in there into the DOM <coughs> in the document object model. Uh, and that causes some problems in overlap of the styling, like the ST123 that Chiara named. Uh, if you have several uh, uh, SVGs that all are produced by Illustrator and they have all got an ST1 style and the one's black and the other's red and the other's blue, well, who's going to win? Well, that's a typical and standard CSS uh, something. So it means that uh, we have to take uh, care of that. So <coughs> there's some extra actions required. Uh, uh, we need uh, what we you typically would do is extract the CSS from your SVG. If you recall, maybe you see saw a C data section in the SVG cell, which is the styling with the SD123. I would say you take that out, put it in a separate CSS, or preferably, in my case, less file to generate a CSS file and reference it like that. Then do some namespacing uh, to prevent the overlap of the styles. So I would suggest uh, to use a class in uh, accordance with the name. So it would be, if the file is named uh, profiles, I just add a wrapper class profiles. I scrolled up a little bit already. And we should be able to see that. So if you recall it from previously, I've got this wrapper class around everything, which allows me to, for this internal styling, add the same uh, pref prefix. So when I join the other one, and the other one's called icons, I've got profiles.st1 or st3, and I've got icons. ST3, so they don't overlap. <coughs> Same goes for the URL selectors. So here uh, there's a uh, gradient selected. The original name uh, would appear in any Illustrator file. So we just rename it. And then all is starting to look well. But if I do it like that, I did some testing, and I basically got it to work on, well, just about any contemporary browser. Windows 7, 8, Mac OS, Ubuntu, iPhone, iPad, Windows Phone, Android, and just any contemporary browser. File inserts perfectly into the DOM, and I can manipulate the color hide parts of it, show parts of it. So now what you would do, um, I've got a real example from the project we're working on and I apologize for reusing uh, some of the imaging from that project. Uh, just didn't have time to produce uh, non-company specific stuff. But it would mean, when Kiara started first, I got five images, five SVGs, one for consulting, training, and three other ones, five separate files. But if you look at them already, you'll see that there's some commonalities in there. So this is the same, that's the same. Well, this is basically the same except for the, for the coloring. So, well, it makes sense to combine them into one. 
and I call that pil pillars, and then just style them by some Zoltigan training representing these two selectors. And that's what makes sense. And so I can have the same image. Oops, sorry. Marco. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's 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 like yeah, it's in layers, and we select the layers by uh, using a CSS class, and the common path. Well, they are basically common. You don't need to have them in five different places. So here we've got an overview. Uh, so this one's injected and combined. They're the same size. These are the individual ones showing and these are the ones as, as image. You'll see some uh, differences in styling that you will have to look at, particularly uh, if you don't combine them, uh, then they will end up by the, by the graphics designer. Well, this text is smaller, so the designer would typically just crop it off like that, resulting in different sizing of styling. So that's also an advantage of putting them together. You have the same size you have little more, or, or if you've got less problems in. Yeah, it's more consistent. Uh, well, the consulting part and the video part are paths, so it's not recognizable as text. Uh, we tried something, but not uh, to that extent. So we'll be continuously working this through, and there will be follow up. So. Yes, you can make it, give it an old text. Because it's basically used as an image. Okay, now, now before I go to the, what I call performance section, I would like to do a short poll on image size. So we've got these two images. Imagine that you would have five similar, different colors of text, and there's, and there's notably there's a gradient in there, so it's not a single color. So what would be the total size of these five images? Can I have calls just for fun? Well, just just imagine it pixel, 600 pixels, whatever, because that's yeah, you can scale it at a, at any size, and it's a gradient. Yeah. <laughs> no realistic <laughs> estimations. Uh. Yeah, for each picture of a five to combined. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one seventy five. 175 keys. Any more takes? More or less? Sorry? 50k. Any more? Okay, it fits in 24k. So I put some numbers together because it's not only. So the five, uh, if I take the five pillar images. Uh, with gradients, so uncompressed, there are text size 96 Ks. That's a resp uh, respective one. So I'll take that as the zero measurement. If I load them as images and I compress them, uh, because Kirara uh, skipped over that part, there's at the end of the production cycle, there's like something, if you, you can minify CSS, you can minify uh, JavaScript, and there's also something like that for 
SVG, which typically takes up 15% of uh, the size of the SVG file. It's not readable, but you can upload that to the website and the browser doesn't mind. So that should be just fine. So you take the if you take the five one and compress them, well, you gain 20% already. It's at 80%. If you now combine, or if you inject them individually, then you've got five files you want to inject. You've got, to be complete, you've got the JavaScript support library that you have to uh, include. So the CSS file for that library is 2.3K, so SVG is kind it's quite light. Uh, so the file size is 61K and six files. So I've got six HTTP requests, and I got, well, 82%, so it's slightly more than the individual image files. But I get the advantage of being able to style them individually. Now, if I combine them, and it kind of doesn't roll up really good, I end up with two files, one image file to inject. I get my JavaScript file that I have to include for the sake of argument, I decided that, okay, I have to generate CSS, but that I would include into the global CSS uh, anyway. So that's not an additional file, but it's additional size. So the CSS in that case is 2.3K. So I get a total compressed file size of 23 something, 2.23, uh, 1K. Yeah, I'm, I thought I was some so and it ends up at being 35% of the total. So it's 25.4K uh, for those five files, if you combine them. Regardless of size. Yes, and, and you can have it really small at the same time at no extra cost. So th th that's what makes it perfectly. <laughs> it's called embrace the factor. <laughs> no, yeah, if you're going to have rasterized stuff, yeah, that's, yeah. But that's beyond the scope of this talk. Now, um, so we talked about the injecting. So that's something I would encourage everybody to experiment with. Just take an SVG, add that uh, SVG in the inject library, and play around with it. Open up an SVG file and see that it's not complex at all if you pinch through it. And the last aspect I want to address is animation, because that's also a really cool thing that you can do. <coughs> well, I would guess that you all know a little bit about standard CSS3 animation. Uh, that's the, what's used here, so you would have and I put in less code because I hate CSS as such. Uh, so I created a mix-in to do the animation. And then I just put in two lines for two stars, for star one, star two. Uh, to star, uh, have a delay of three seconds to start and then cycle in two seconds. And the other one starts at five seconds. And cycles at two, as keyframes star one, star two, defined here, where it you see it goes over the color here to there. I don't know why I left that in by accident, but it normally I would use color constant. And if you expand this into CSS, uh, you get something that's five times as long and ten times as more difficult to read. And that's the beauty. If you use external CSS files, you can just use your LS, compile it, reference it from your file, and all should be well. Then we, oops. 
another form of animation that we can use, and this is only the tip of the iceberg, is internal CSS uh, SVG animation. In this example, we have this circle. I think it's one of these two. <laughs> uh, it's uh, actually it's a middle one. Where you say, uh, so this is the definition of the circle itself. So it has an ID stroke one. It has a class. It has a center, and it has a radius, and that's it. And we style it by CSS. That will be your circle. Then, when you want to animate it, you uh, can add a tag, animate. The Y position in this case, from this position to that position, start at zero seconds, and uh, uh, the then move over to uh, this style after it ends plus one second. So it stops for one second, and then it fires the next one, and it takes three seconds. Next one starts moves from 75 to 34.6, so it moves down again, takes three seconds, and then it fires that one again. And that produces the bouncing effect. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg, what you can do. You can move images around vectors. You can scale your stuff dynamically. You can rotate it, flip it, color it. Uh, well, you know, whatever your uh, imagination desires, and that will work in an image as itself. <coughs> but you have to code it in SVG, and uh, in XML. But it's not really that hard if you have a few examples. Oops. See, I'm not Mac proof. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed around Macs. So now I broke this. Now I've got an example of JavaScript animation. Uh, I didn't get around to <coughs> really produce mine, so I used one of the of the web. Well, what JavaScript animation <coughs> basically does, uh, SVG by itself also has JavaScript in, uh, support in it. So you could add JavaScript to the SVG and do stuff. But these libraries like Snap allow you to do the same thing from JavaScript, an external library. <coughs> and I just took a very small example. So if you say, I want to uh, the sun rays, uh, it does a transformation, rotating it to 90 degrees over uh, uh, this. So basically, rotation up by the point. And yes? Now you could be, uh, do the same thing inside an SVG file, but yeah, well, SVG specification is quite long. Uh, we can talk about that. I've got some eBooks uh, you could look into. Uh, tons of things you can do, but yeah, the typical thing to do here, uh, and that, that's why you would use JavaScript, is because you can then trigger it uh, on your usual uh, CSS selector. So if something's hovered, start an animation do it on hover, uh, on click, uh, all the usual things. That makes those library interesting to do. And, uh, and in essence, it uses the similar syntax as the internal animation. But, it's, but you have to write your JavaScript code for that. Well, this is not complete. Uh, we'll put the presentation up after it's spell checked. <laughs> and then everybody can have a look at it. Well, well, it, it's up already. So if I do, uh, but please bear with us until we have spell checked. Don't start calling email. Well, I found this spell. Uh, give us a few days to pull those out. If you go to viryagroupcom slash etv for uh, embrace the vector, then you find all this information. Uh, you can download it. I still have to look up how what what I have to do, reference, uh, credit, the libraries and stuff so that you can download it without any problems because we want to do it right, but there was just not enough time uh, to do that for now. Uh, 
and I think it will be become a living document. So once we progress in our understanding of this, we'll update it and share that with whomever's interested. But specifically, this SVG injects something uh, with the styling and the quirks that it involves with the browsers, the things that you have to do to avoid the conflicts. Well, that's something that we had to find out the hard way. I've not found it referenced on the web to date. Uh, and it's really cool using it in that way. So for that part, I want to conclude the presentation. I want to ask Yara up here so that we can answer general questions. Bubs. Yes. Okay, well that's very soon. Uh, let me see. So you will see that uh, the this one, Kiara, the ID, that's the uh, that's actually the layer name. The problem with that is that Illustrator. Uh, there's other tools that maybe do differently, but Illustrator allows you to use the same, like, nose. So we've got a Kiara and a Marco, we both have a nose. Mm -hmm. So we have Kiara and there's an ID nose in there. Uh, yes, please. Yes, thank you. No, but okay. Uh, uh, as, as I see it for Illustrator, if it, it, it's perfectly happy with having two classes or layers named nose internally, but once it starts exporting it, it starts to add stuff to it to make it unique. Yeah. Uh, but if there's a solution to it, uh, yeah, it would be great uh, to mitigate that. Yes? Uh, uh, we intend to swap it out. So for this project that we are uh, engaging with, uh, we intend to make it uh, imageless. Yeah. Uh, well, apart from pictures, where you have to have uh, a raster graphics, but our intention is to have all graphics SVGs. So we think it's possible. But the proof will be in the eating of the pudding. And I'll be haunted down the next weeks to provide that proof. Yeah, Eric. Yes. Yes. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. That's amazing. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> we, we go for it. I mean, designers uh, push for it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, you have to start at uh, at nine, nine. Uh, to f to have some decent support. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can create fallback, but then you yeah. don't have the uh, all the advantages. Um, if you <coughs> want to do individual graphics uh, stuff, you can use a library like Raphael. Then you can still have backwards compatibilities, uh, compatibility to the even to i.e. 6 or something, mm -hmm. but I feel that there has to be a point where we say, okay, well, we just draw the line here and we go forward doing the nice stuff and not trying to lug around. Uh, I, 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 I
Yeah, but probably you have to trace your original raster graphic, and that will be the fastest way. Yeah, yeah there's uh, like Inkscape, wi uh, which is a free program. Yeah. There's a web-based tool, uh, SVG Edit. Uh, you can do that online. It produces relatively great stuff, so it's all in there, so you can check it out. No extra stuff required. Yeah. More questions? Otherwise, I have to speak to my timekeeper. Okay, thank you very much for you. your attention.